We had Professor Solari Sedentop yes. on our podcast last week, um, and he is looking at, at the bigger picture. Mm. I know you wrote a book published mm. earlier this year, Beyond Brexit, yeah. about constitutional implications. Yes, uh, Solari's idea was that, well, first of all, on one detail, I'm really interested to mm. get your reaction, which is that he felt that the decline of the squirearchy mm. um, historically mm. Um, has, in fact, led to the collapse of a kind of regional power settlement in, yes. the, in the England in particular yes. and that has made the need for a written constitution much larger. Mm. In other words, that mm. you know, in fact, mm. regionalism was oddly protected by a kind of class structure yeah. that the liberal movement mm. has taken apart. Is, do, you, do you buy that? Well, I'm strongly in favour of a constitution. Indeed, that's one of the concludes of my book. But I think the problem we face is slightly different and I'm afraid it's this that liberal elitists, and I suppose I'm a member of the liberal elite like myself, liberal elitists are not used to losing and they're very bad losers. Mm. And I suspect the public sense that and it gives rise to populism. I think that's the key social problem we face. The liberal elite are used to winning the debate. Uh, this time they're losing the debate and they don't like it. And I think that is the fundamental problem that we are now facing. Let's presume Brexit does happen. Mm. Do you think we will move towards a proper written constitution in the ne in coming decades? Yes. Do you think that will now happen? Well, my book, frankly, was written more in hope than expectation. I think it does leave a gap because although people say we don't have a constitution, we did have, we do have, while we're members of the European Union because we're bound by European Union law. Mm. One obvious example is we can't limit EU immigration. Parliament can't do that, even though a lot of people would like to see it done. And that was one of the motivations, of course, for the Brexit vote. Mm. Now, um, uh, there's a gap in the, in the system leaving. We move from a protected system to an unprotected system. That's more or less unique in the modern world, I mm. think. So um, I think there is a strong case for a constitution. And yes. what would it protect in particular? Is, is it about power distribution, the relative importance of judiciary versus executive versus parliament, or is it about rights? What areas do you think will be most vulnerable? Two, thing, two things in particular. Firstly, the territorial settlement, devolution in Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the very different form of devolution in England. We need a charter, in my view, of rights and responsibilities of central government and devolved bodies. But the most important thing is the protection of individual rights, right. because very so recently... a Bill of Rights, essentially. Yes. Well, very recently, the EU enacted its... Um, Charter of Fundamental Rights, which is much more powerful than the European Convention and allows judges to disapply legislation which conflicts with those rights. Now, leaving that, this is the only part of EU legislation which is not being incorporated into our own law. Right. I think that leaves a gap which should be filled by a Bill of Rights, in, in my view, uh, echoing the EU's Charter of Fundamental Rights. But if we've nearly torn ourselves to shreds over this the Brexit thing, can you imagine a public debate about what should be included in a constitutional Bill of Rights? I mean, this, is, you, this would be a, a horror scene. It would take decades and we'd, we'd never get back to normal. Yeah, I fear you're probably right, but I do think it's uh, of immediate importance to have a charter in relation to devolution. I think that is an immediate issue because obviously the EU was the glue which held the devolution settlement together and there's a great danger of it all becoming unstuck. Perhaps I can conclude that we're one of just three democracies that doesn't have a constitution, the other two being New Zealand and Israel, though Israel is moving towards one. So. We're pretty it's much an, an outlier. Elite group. Yes, and it might be worth asking this question to yourself. The other 27 members of the European Union retain the Charter of Fundamental Rights. We don't. Our rights will be guaranteed by Parliament. Now, are our MPs so much more sensitive to the protection of rights than MPs in the legislatures of the other countries that they should be entrusted with this vital function? I leave that question for you to answer. The public probably thinks not.